Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out this video here on Show Style and Spirit. I am Ebony, of course. As you can see from the title of this video, I want to talk with you all about some stories ripped right from the headlines via the neighborhood talk on Instagram. There is a few that I want to talk about with you. Now, before we get into these stories, I ask that you please hit the like button on this video. You hear us content creators ask you all constantly to hit the like button. Even if you were to hit the dislike button, that will, you know, stimulate this video, pushing it through YouTube's algorithm, recommending it to more people who enjoy discussing various topics that's happening, you know, right outside our front doors. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit. I would definitely love to have you. And everything that I'm saying in this video is alleged and just my opinion. And the Copyright Act of 1976 says that my fair use commentary on these stories, on these videos, are allowed for criticism. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, again, these stories are coming from the Neighborhood Talk. Um, their journalists do an amazing job of compiling stories from all over the country, some international stories. So um, definitely shout out to the Neighborhood Talk. So now um, I'm sure you see this headline with 45 saying that he'd be okay with going to jail if forced to. To me, in my opinion, that sounds like someone who's confident that he's not going to go into the slammer. That's why he can speak so boldly because I don't think that's sort of common or normal to say I'm okay with going to jail you would say no I ask for your prayers um, you know I'm hoping the judge will be merciful or their heart will be softened concerning me and that I don't have to but just, just to say I'm okay with it that seems like cap or someone who knows that they're not going to go but anyway, let's get into this story from Baltimore where a fetus was found on the bus. So I wanna talk about this because we are living now in a society where Roe versus Wade has been reversed. So I'm going to let me- Police are being very limited in, in the information. I do not want you all to experience an echo, my bad. So I'm going to mute my mic and then go back to the story. Please hit the like button. Police are being very limited in, in the information they're willing to share about what exactly happened here today. And at the same time, though, I'm sure this is a call that they typically don't get. It's certainly a story I've never had to share. And some people tell me they're just speechless. But I want to show you where this happened. A bus driver, an MTA bus driver, finding a fetus on an MTA bus right here. This is at 25th and Kirk Avenue in Northeast Baltimore. We were here earlier as Baltimore police and MTA police were investigating. Now investigators say it was just before 1245 this afternoon that an MTA bus driver reported he had found a fetus on the seat of a bus. Now I've reached out to MTA to ask if that driver was maybe getting ready to make a shift change and was checking the bus and came across that. If there were people on the bus, they are directing all of my questions to Baltimore police. So I have reached out to them as well. And we were able to see some homicide, homicide detectives with BPD on scene today going into that bus. But at this point, once again, police are really only confirming that an MTA bus driver found a fetus on the seat of a bus this afternoon. I got the chance to speak with people in this area, some of who, which ride the bus. Many of them say though, they're just really shocked to hear this happen. That don't make sense. I have a mother of three and a four year old grandson and I, I'm like in shock. And I did ask police if officers are maybe looking over some bus camera footage uh, to figure out when this happened and who may be behind it. I also asked if this is being investigated as a suspicious or questionable death. They tell me that it's still an active and open investigation. They are not willing to answer any of my questions just yet. Live tonight from Northeast Baltimore, Tori Orgy, WBAL TV 11 News. Police are being very limited in the, in the information. They're Okay, 
I want to read you all the caption for this story, and then I want to get into my commentary. So yesterday it was reported that Baltimore City Police found a fetus on the bus, on a bus. Baltimore City Police and the Maryland Transit Administration uh, responded to a report of a fetus found on an MTA bus this past Saturday. Police say they responded to the 2500 block of Kirk Avenue around 12.40 p.m after an MTA bus driver reported finding a fetus on a seat inside the bus. MTA police said that Baltimore Police Department is handling the investigation. Officials say that no further information is available at this time. Now, um, in the comments, people are saying that, you know, this is what happens when you criminalize, um, you know, the ability to have a A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N, to unalive a fetus. And um, it sounds like, you know, they're hoping to find out who is the mother of this fetus to, I'm sure they would press charges against her, but it could have also been some sort of miscarriage. No one really knows. In my opinion, I feel like because there was a black woman out of Ohio where she went to the bathroom, she thought she had to use the bathroom and she actually pushed out a fetus. And um, when she went to the hospital, when um, you know she was trying to, the aftermath of it all, she actually got charged with, um, I believe the charge is called um, abusing a corpse, but the charges were dropped after the investigators were able to figure out that you know she didn't have any ill intention, she was not trying to harm her fetus. And I feel like it's like a double whammy at this point. First, you take away a woman's right to you know get rid of an unwanted pregnancy or you know to not have a fetus develop into a baby you know and and so that she has the baby but then if there's any sort of i guess unexpected a b o r t i o n then you know she could also be charged and could face jail time it just seems like a way to really um turn a lot of women into criminals without really hearing them out. Because the black woman in Ohio was pleading like, I did not purposely harm a fetus. I thought I had to use the bathroom. And um, a lot of people are saying that in the comments, sometimes like it's hard for the comments to trigger for me to scroll down. So I do apologize, but that is the gist. A lot of people were saying, it, it looks like it's probably um, you know, a miscarriage an unexpected miscarriage. People were saying if this girl takes herself to emergency, she's gonna probably get charged then, you know, when she's trying to get some medical attention. Now, I know that for some people, they are totally against A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N. A lot of people, they link it to their religious beliefs. Um, I personally, I separate policy and politics from my spiritual beliefs, I do not connect the two because I'm not convinced that politicians are seeking God, praying to God, flipping through the Bible, looking for scriptures on when they create policies and laws for this country. So if they're not being led by God, you know, I totally separate the two when I vote, but you know, you vote your heart, but I just wanted to explain where I was coming from. But um, I just don't want the, the mother of this fetus to automatically face charges and she's viewed as a criminal. We don't know what led to the fetus being on, on the bus. We don't know how old this young lady could be. She could be a teenager. We don't know if the conception of the fetus was a result of an RAPE or you know molestation. It could be anything. But just from that case in Ohio, it just seems I'm just automatically thinking like law enforcement, they could be overzealous. But I hope that we get some sort of update on this story. So now I want to move on. There's quite a few that I thought um, were definitely worth discussing. So, OK, so for this next story, it is about um, a father of a 13 week old infant. He will be going to prison. He was convicted for shoving a baby wipe down the baby's throat. And the mother of the 13-week-old baby, she testified um, in court at the sentencing saying that um, they were making a mistake. 
you know, so we're going to get into this story. I am going to mute my mic just in case there is video. I remember reading all of the details. If you follow me on Instagram, I shared this on my IG stories and I even said, you know, read the caption slash details. So I'm going to mute my mic just in case there's video for this story. Okay, so there is no video. I just don't want you all to have to deal with an echo. So I'm going to start with the headline and then go into the details. A 20-year-old mother defends father of their deceased 13-week-old infant in court after he was convicted of shoving a baby wipe down the baby's throat. Y'all are making a mistake, is what she says. So 20-year-old Asiana McEwen made the surprise of defending the father of their late 13-week-old baby, Travion Hughes Sr., after finding out he was purposefully shoved a baby wipe down their baby's throat when he was 18 years old at the time to stop the baby from crying. There's lots of details. This is according to the Daily Mail. A jury just convicted 20 year old Travion this week for intentionally and fatally shoving that wipe down the poor infant's throat. Asiana took the stand at his sentencing to slam the court's decision. This all happened on June 25th, 2022, just two days after they moved to Cleveland from Chicago. While McEwen was at work, so the young lady was working, Hughes was at home with the baby, his brother and his girlfriend. During the trial, Hughes tried to defend himself saying his baby son accidentally choked on the wife. So he tried to, you know, say that the baby choked. He claimed he replaced a milk soaked bib with the wipe and then left the room to deal with his wounds because he'd been shot 19 times in Chicago. When he came back, he said he found his son choking and the baby was still alive when paramedics arrived. Tragically, the baby was pronounced dead at the hospital with the wipe still lodged in his throat. His attorney is saying they disagree with the jury, arguing Hughes didn't recklessly or purposefully shove that wipe down his baby's throat. McEwen fired back at the court, warning that God gets the last word, blaming medical professionals for her son's death. She wasn't alone either. Travion Hughes' mother, Sandra Norwood, was there too, vowing, Ohio is going to get sick of me because justice will prevail. On Friday, Hughes was found guilty of murder, involuntary manslaughter, and child endangerment, with the prosecutors arguing he did it to stop the baby from crying. Y'all are making a mistake. Y'all know what y'all did to my child and y'all are not going to get away with this, McEwen adds. So people in the comments, they felt like it is significant that the baby was still alive when uh, the baby was in the ambulance with paramedics. And by the time they arrived at the hospital, the baby was gone. Um, but it could have been what, a lack of oxygen with the white being shoved down the throat. And I get it that the baby crying is too much for you. He's He was 18 at the time, probably did have a very low patience level, but that's not a normal response to the crying to shove the wipe down the throat. Like I've heard of, you can run the vacuum cleaner, take a baby for a ride if they're like colic, you know, but shoving a wipe down their throat, that is not normal. That, in my opinion, that does seem like, you know, abuse. Now, I do want to talk for a moment about the fact that at the time he was recovering from being shot 19 times. And this happened two days after they moved from Chicago to Cleveland. It's giving they were like on the run or trying to get away from someone. And of course, I'm hoping the reason why he did not have a job was, of course, he was trying to recover from being shot 19 times. But, you know, it always looks out of order when you see the man not working at home and the girlfriend is out working and, you know, he's expected to care for the infant. It is very sad loss of a life. These parents have lost their baby. And, you know, now he is going to um, go to prison for the involuntary manslaughter, 
M-U-R-D-E-R, as well as child endangerment. I feel like the involuntary manslaughter and the child endangerment is fair because you just don't shove a wipe down a baby's throat. There's like no scenario where that is acceptable, common, normal, or even necessary. So I do feel like some sort of um, discipline is definitely warranted in this case. And then, you know, again, it would be a matter of investigating what were the paramedics notes on what happened with the baby from the time that they left the home to they arrived at the hospital. But rest in peace to that poor little baby. And hopefully Travion, you know, has gotten his life together in these past two years after being shot, you know, the 19 times. But definitely let me know what you all think. Um, do you think his punishment fits what happened? Um, you know, what do you think about him shoving the wipe down the throat? You know, definitely express yourself in the comments. So now this next story, um, it is a little sad. It is about a parent who chose to not attend his daughter's graduation. And he totally gets defensive when she texts him about not showing up. So I definitely wanted to share this with you all as well. So this is a text thread that a young lady, so she's about 18 years old, she's graduated high school. She has left this text thread on her Twitter and one of the journalists for the Neighborhood Talk, they saw the story and they forwarded onto Instagram. So we're gonna go through it. So a girl shares text messages confronting her father for not showing up to her high school graduation. I don't give a F, I don't care about your graduation. That's the headline. So the young lady texts her dad, are you coming to my graduation tomorrow? He says, I would like to. She says, K. Okay. Then it's the next day, the day of the graduation. It is 3.13 p.m. She says, why didn't you come? And he says, we will talk if you want to. She says, can you answer the question? If not, then there isn't anything to talk about. And he responds with, bet. You know, he's treating her like she's a ninja out in the streets, okay? Then the daughter says, I don't think there's any excuse or reason of why you didn't come to my graduation when you yourself said you wanted to come and you had all the time in the world to clear your schedule. I'm very disappointed and disgusted, but I can't say I'm surprised. I truly don't want anything to do with you after this. And he responds with a lot of obscenities and cursing. He says, I don't care, that's why your mouth buy. And you wonder why I don't give two Fs. I give a F, Aaliyah. I don't give a F. I don't care about your graduation, about calling meaty and checking on me or anything. F you. And the daughter responds with, you need God. And he says, you need God. And the daughter says, and you wonder why none of the kids want to spend time with you or call you? You act like a child yourself. You having kids on top of kids and can't even take care of the ones you have now. You mad at me because I don't call. When you are my father, I shouldn't have to call you for us to speak. You can die for all I care. You missed my graduation, your first child, and your only girl. You really should be ashamed of yourself, and you need a major reality check. You jump female to female with kids. Find on to yours when you can't even support and show out for your own. And this was a part of her tweet, you know, worst father award goes to my dad. Mind you, he knew a month in advance about my graduation. So um, I felt like that was that that was pretty sad. It sucked. You know, um, he did not mind rejecting her. And I feel like these types of parents that are not involved, they know that the child is feeling rejected, right? I'm sure this isn't the first time that he's let her down. I'm sure that he's missed birthday parties, perhaps even Christmases. And, you know, he doesn't give a F. You know, he treats her not like his daughter, but like a female that he's been sleeping with. And now he's dogging her out and he doesn't care if he hurts her feelings or disrespects her. That is how he's treating his own daughter. 
Now, um, it's unfair to her. I just hope that she does not take the rejection from her dad and she looks for love in all the wrong places. I hope that she just learns to self-love, to try and fill some of that void and just does not expect the love that she did not get from her dad from any man in any capacity. Because I feel like manipulative men, they can like sniff that from a mile away, you know, daddy issues, low self-esteem, or if you're looking for love in all the wrong places. So I hope that she furthers her education, focuses on her studies, you know, her term papers, her exams, maybe get a part-time job, party with your friends, you know, be careful, but, um, you know, just do not try and look for external validation. I hope she just validates herself because this happens a lot and it just leads to broken kids who have been rejected and they can make poor choices, you know, as a result. But that was definitely sad. People in the comments, they wanted to know her cash app. She was in the comments saying thank you to everyone for the encouraging words. And she left her cash app. So I'm sure that she feels the love that her dad should have given her. So now for those of you who may be checking out this video that lives in the Atlanta area, I guess there is like a major water main break. It is affecting restaurants. It even affected the venue that um, Megan Thee Stallion was supposed to perform at in Atlanta. I have a feeling that Tisha from Love and Marriage Huntsville did not get a chance to see Meg Thee Stallion because of the water main break. I guess like it was affecting like the bathrooms at the venue weren't working. Megan offered to buy porta potties, but then like the city of Atlanta, the mayor said, what, are you going to like shut down the, the street where the venue is? Like, I guess it did not work out. And Meg Thee Stallion was definitely heard about it. So I hope that that gets worked out. For those that are in Georgia, I hope you all, you know, are not without water. I hope it's not a huge inconvenience. But let's get into this next story, y'all. So this woman, she is stuck in Turks and Caicos after accidentally traveling with ammunition in her duffel bag. She faces a minimum of 12 years in prison. Now, I am going to definitely read the caption to you all because this story is a trip. All right. So a black woman and her daughters are being held in Turks and Caicos after she accidentally traveled to the island with ammunition in her duffel bag. The woman, Sharita Greer, admitted that the duffel bag is normally used for storing her pow pow and the, the bullets. She says she cleaned the bag out to use for their Turks trip, but accidentally left some of the in it. She was able to make it to Turks because the TSA in Orlando, Florida, they didn't even detect the little bullets, but they detect her lotion. They poured out her lotion, but they totally missed the ammunition. OK, and so there were two of the bullets in the bag. According to a report by Black Enterprise, Florida Secretary of State Cord Boyd confirmed he met with government officials to determine how they can expedite their release and prevent this from happening to other Americans in the future. Now, uh, Greyer spent three nights in jail. She was released on bond, but is still waiting to appear before a judge as her court date is July the 5th. If convicted, firearm and ammunition offenses on the island carry a minimum sentence of 12 years in prison. So this is like Brittany Griner almost all over again, except Brittany Griner had the Hashib oil and this lady had two bullets. So now for like if you travel and you have like your carry on bag, you may have had things in that bag that you emptied out so that you could pack and go travel. Like I have bags with like the Bath and Body Works lotions that I like keep in my purse or at my desk when I work. I have a bag with all that stuff in it, you know, the um, antibacterial soaps. So when I get home from the store, I just put them in that bag in my closet. And then, you know, you may just have stuff from like the last time you traveled, I don't know, in your bag. So then you clean it out and you pack. So she thought she cleaned out this bag completely, but she had not. 
The amazing thing is, is that she went through TSA in Orlando, Florida, and they didn't find the two thing, the two bullets. They just found her lotion and made her get rid of it. But Turks and Caicos, oh my gosh. It makes me wonder if as soon as they see that you're American, are they going above and beyond with their searches? Because like on the flip side, obviously TSA in the States, if especially if you're a departure, they're obviously, you know, kind of have stepping it if they did not detect the two bullets while she was still in the States. But once she arrives in Turks and Caicos, they're going above and beyond with their search and they find them. I'm guessing it was lodged like in a little tiny crease of the bag or in a pocket way at the bottom. And she just didn't feel it. Those last two. But oh my gosh, like I hope that she is not convicted because she needs to get back home to the States. I'm sure she has a job. She has a little over a month before she appears before a judge. So I just hope that she can come on home. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so someone comments, you know, two bullets, no pow pow. What's she going to do? Throw them like darts, 12 years in prison for that. And it just seems like, you know, if Americans, if you're caught in another country and some sort of crime happens, although this is extremely accidental, you know, it just seems to be like arrested in a foreign country. It just seems like the odds are against you so much more intensely than if you were here in the States. I know that sounds crazy, especially for people of color, but that is like, like uh, I get like almost like a fear when I hear about an American getting detained in a foreign country. I'm like, yikes. And someone says, I just got back from Turks a few days ago and baby, their TSA and customs don't play. I pray she is let go and reunited with her family soon. So it just seems very unfortunate. I hope that this lady gets out. But these are the stories that I definitely wanted to share with you all. And I wanted to make a, a video and just get your thoughts. But I thank you all so much for checking out this video. I appreciate the support. As you all know, the majority of my content is surrounding Love and Marriage Huntsville. But sometimes as a creative, I am inspired to do non-Love and Marriage Huntsville videos. So thank you for watching this. Please hit the like button on this video as it is a free way of supporting the channel. And please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. I hope that you all are enjoying your Sunday. I was thinking that I may make a video about Melody Cherie scene on the latest episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Just the importance of not submitting to people saying that you're picky, you know, or you're very judgmental, you know, because her friend Shanita was acting like she didn't understand Melody not wanting a man who she didn't like how he dressed. One guy was missing a side tooth. She likes what she likes. And I know what it's like to be told that I am picky, you know, and so I think that it's best that you hold your ground and do not settle, especially do not give in to pressure from other women who want to see you just take just almost anybody. So not a good idea. So I'm thinking about making a video about that. And so um, I, I've done my grocery shopping for the week. I'm wearing like a maxi dress. So like whenever you see me with like these V-necks, these are like maxi dresses. And like I got a couple compliments on this one. So that was cool. But um, I am going to probably go to the park and do some reading now. And um, I may make another video, you know, Love and Marriage Huntsville related and come back later on. But I hope you are enjoying your Sunday. Thanks again for watching this video. And I will talk with you all soon. Bye.